Thank you for clicking on this Fun with Pete and Sherry video. I am your host, Julian, and coming to you live from Charlottesville, where it's very hot. Uh, in fact, that's why I didn't get a video up last week. Uh, the heat, of course, is not the only uh, thing plaguing us this summer. We are also uh, in a stubborn recession, uh, about to become a double dip recession, and there is the theme for the summer, double dipping. So here during this double dip summer, uh, I have decided to spend the summer reviewing malt whiskeys that are going to come in either in the low range of average or lower. Uh, this is, uh, I am perhaps making a virtue of, of necessity. Uh, if I am uh, tightening my belt, some of you probably are as well. As a result, you might want to know which of the less expensive scotches are still very good and, or very interesting, more importantly, very interesting, uh, so that you can have something uh, really interesting to drink even though you can't go out and spend uh, what you maybe once did on bottles of scotch. Um, we are, many of us, poorer than we uh, expected to be, uh, poorer than we once were, and certainly poorer than we would like to be. So, starting in the low $40 range, and uh, I'm going to be reviewing Glen Morangy today. Uh, well, let's see what this Glen Morangy is like, shall we? Pleasant smelling enough. A little tropical, perhaps. Uh, a bit reminiscent uh, of Glen Levitt. Very yellow color, um, tiny bit of, uh, of amber creeping in, not much, mostly yellow. Flies, oh yeah, many plagues upon us this summer. Hmm, uh, okay, uh, citrus, vanilla, and a uh, little bit of hay. Final test. There's a uh, burst of citrus, but it doesn't last long. Yes, get oranges and lemons both in that uh, in that initial flavor. The flavor that that lingers a bit longer is though uh, more of a dried fruit, dried apricot, dried plum, something like that. But the taste you get most on the finish. And really from beginning to end, and even on the nose, at least that I get, is alcohol. What we have here is a scotch uh, with a delicate flavor. And uh, as I have mentioned, uh, it's perhaps a bias, but I I'm not really uh, a fan of the most delicate flavored scotches, so uh, I have tried the Glen Morangy uh, many times uh, at different times of day in different states of mind, uh, after different foods, with different people, um, looking for looking for the thing about it that I enjoy, and uh, well, I, I don't uh, I don't detest it certainly. But I'm also not particularly moved by this scotch, and uh, I, uh, you know, all I can tell you is I've tried it. I had the opinion I did, and uh, and and I'm telling you what it was. I'm not trying to tell you 
your opinion. Keep that in mind. I'm only trying to tell you mine. If you, uh, if you have a palate that is sensitive at all to alcohol, I would say Glen Morangy's probably not a good one for you. And uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it 5.5. 5.5. Um, now, Glen Morangy is a, uh, a well-respected uh, distillery in Scotland. They own Ardbeg now, as it happens, um, made by the 16 men of Tain, it says on the bottle. Uh, I would have pronounced that Toyn, but I found out from Glen Morangy's website it's pronounced Tain. Was, that was the Irish pronunciation, Toyn. Um, but, uh, you know, it, uh, it, it, it doesn't work for me, so I, I, uh, I feel that... Um, you know, not liking Glen Morangy is unfortunate because uh, that's probably enough to keep me out of, you know, the uh, important, sophisticated Scotch person's club, and, uh, and, and I regret that. Truly, I do. I have tried many of their um, extra finishes. Glen Morangy more or less pioneered extra finishes. Uh, they have uh, Quinta Ruban, which is finished in port casks. They have La Santa, which is finished in sherry casks, and they have Nectar Door, which is finished in Saturn casks. But strangely enough, um, I find their extra finishes sometimes good, sometimes sometimes not meh, but, uh, but just not very subtle. Uh, they seem very sort of smashed uh, together. Balvenie, as I've told you, seems to be doing the same thing better. Okay, um, now, now I have also had the Glen Morangy 18 year old, and I will say, at that point, everything came back together, and that was a magnificent scotch. Um, not just because it's partly sherried, uh, which this is not, but uh, I simply think that that, uh, this style, is not a bad style, it's not a bad taste. Uh, those things I mentioned, hay and, and vanilla, are, are good smells, and, and uh, a combination of fresh fruit and, and dried fruit that lingers is good, and it's, um, you know, it, it doesn't have a great deal of bottom, I don't think, but that keeps it exciting and vital, and when the, uh, when the harshness and the alcohol taste is gone, as it pretty much is in the 18, this turns into something really, really nice. And I was at a table, by the way, uh, with an 18-year-old Glen Morangy on it. We had an 18-year-old Glen Fittick and an 18-year-old Highland Park. And as good as those were, uh, the 18-year-old Glen Morangy disappeared fast uh, and before any of the others because it was just so uh, uh, exciting. You wanted it in your glass and you wanted it to go down your throat. And this Glen Morangy is um, just drinking scotch. Okay, so next week uh, and the week after, doing a couple more scotches here in this uh, in this uh, price range, the lower forties. After that. As the summer wears on and the belt grows even tighter, uh, I'm going to be reviewing some scotches that fall into the 30-something dollar price range. Um, uh, cheap but not uninteresting scotches. And after that, uh, I am going to be reviewing some scotches that fall into the $20, 20-something price range. Uh, that's single malt scotches and even the ABC store is still carrying it, one that falls in the under $20 bottle of single malt scotch. So uh, stay tuned because uh, if you find yourself wanting a scotch and not wanting to break the budget, uh, I will be able to point out which ones are, uh, are interesting and, and worth checking out. So thank you for clicking on this Fun with Pete and Sherry video. I'll see you next time.